Well, it's been a riveting day's test match cricket between Pakistan and England. Pakistan were bowled out for 579 and then we saw a brave declaration. Harry Brook was one of the stars. Once again, contributions from the top and in response, Pakistan are at 80 for two. This is how the match stands at this point of time. A lot of talk around that brave declaration. 264 for 7 is what England declared at. And then in response, Imam ul Haq is still at the crease. 43 not out with Pakistan needing 263 runs to win. Welcome to the Inverex Solar Energy Pit Side Show. Now, tomorrow is going to be an interesting day in this test match because we could get a result. It could go either way, which is why we are looking most forward to it. Everything, all the action that is lined up for us. I've been joined by Bazit Khan and Pakistan bowling coach Sean Tate. Sean, welcome to the Inverex Pit Side Show. I just want to ask you about what you feel, how things went for Pakistan today. Um... I think it was a, a pretty decent day. You know, there's there's no doubt. Um, you guys will know watching. You know, we've been up up against it during this test a few times, more than a few times, and I think we've responded fairly well. Um, it might not always look that that way from the outside, but even with the ball, um, the guys have been under the pump. Uh, we, you know, we're a bowler down. I still felt like we fought, um, and you know, I think the game's in a in a very interesting position, um, especially for the viewers at home. Yeah. You're talking about the game being in an interesting position. Um, I mean, what's been the dressing room talk at this point of time? You're approaching the target. How are you going about it? Because there's a whole day for Pakistan to play tomorrow. I mean, you've got to take it fairly deep, I suppose, you know. Um, there's a whole thing about losing wickets, getting the runs, all that stuff, the usual um, last day test match result stuff. But I think, um, look, we're just going to bat. The guys The guys have been playing well. I thought we obviously batted fairly well in the, in the first innings. And... Um, continue on from there um as the uh, as a result sort of gets a bit closer then obviously you look at look at that at the time were you surprised by the declaration at all it was uh, we were sort of sitting back wondering what they were going to do and how aggressive they were going to be um not surprised because that's that's what england yeah that's the way england play now um i think it was um i mean for test cricket really good though yeah yeah about the pitch is this one of the worst pitches to bowl fast bowling on or not i mean possibly yeah i think that's why I, i'm actually quite impressed with the way we went about it because we lost uh, harris um we're a bowler down so from a from a quicks point of view the two guys hustled in that's all they could that's all they could do they bowled you know they improved from the first day and bowled pretty good areas um so i was impressed i was impressed yeah and and you've got sort of five test matches back to back how many fast bowlers would you ideally want to rotate? It, it's really tough. It's back-to-back -to -back test matches or on pitches which are really flat. I mean, we've got guys in, in the wings, but yeah, you're right. It, it is tough. It's going to be there's going to be some tough decisions from our management made during this this whole five you know five test matches. So um, it's not going to be easy. There's no doubt about that. But um, luckily, a rest day tomorrow for our bowlers, then and then possibly another three before the next test match. So we've got a few days to get the guys taped up, uh, bandaged up and ready to go again, yeah. What's the update on Harris Rove then? He's got a quad strain. He's, do you think he's going to be fit for the second test match? I don't know. I actually don't know, to be honest. I haven't um, I haven't gone into deep conversations with the medical guys. Um, I hope so, um, but I'm not sure. I, I couldn't say, yeah. As a, as a bowling coach, um, what do you tell your team? You know, how should they be bowling in these conditions? Yeah. There's obviously not much at offer. There's not a lot happening on that wicket. What do you tell them? What do you tell your fast bowlers to be? How, how should they be bowling in these yeah, well, This test match has been an interesting one from a coaching point of view as well, because, you know, the way that England have, have gone about it, um, yeah, sure, they've been playing this way, but this is even obviously a bit of a perfect storm with the wicket, a great batting wicket as well. Um, so it's a perfect storm for them to, to make the runs they've made. So you sort of sit back and, and, and take it all in for a session and then go, right, you know, what message am I going to deliver to the guys? And I think patience was a big thing. Um, and maybe changing those areas, I'm not going to say one day bowling, but something in the middle between test and one day, one day bowling in a way. Um, you saw Nassim Shah take the pace off a couple of times, got Stokes out with that. Um, sort of hitting that top of the stumps length and a bit straighter than probably your normal test match lengths. Um, and obviously we had a bit of a defensive. We, the guys square the wicket, we had them out for a lot of the uh, match as well, which is a lot different to what you'd normally do in a test match. 
Yeah, and and well, looking from the outside, I particularly thought that Pakistan bowled better in the second innings than they did the first. And and obviously that first innings, as you talked about, there's a that element of, of shock really the way that that England batted. Now this innings and now sort of preparing ahead, it might get easier because you know exactly what to expect yeah. from England. Oh, exactly right. You know, um, we yeah. I mean, that first. We knew they were going to come hard. Mm. We knew the way that England were going to play, no but doubt. But that, yeah, <laughs> that was um, extreme and amazing to watch for, for cricket fans. Yeah. But um, so we had to. We had that first session. I didn't think we bowled that well. You're right. Um, and we had to sort of sit back and go, okay, how are we going to go about the rest of this match? Um, which is why I say I was impressed with the guys, the way they did stand up, a bowler down, and and kept toiling away. You know? How do you decide to bowl to someone who decides to bat left-handed? We saw that with Joe Root today. Yeah. I mean, again, Test cricket evolving even more, you know. Um, so, especially a guy like Joe Root, you know, one of one of the great batsmen in the world, and you know, people would say, a, you know, a correct batsman with a great technique, and he's the one that's turning around hitting the ball the other way. So, show, it shows the mentality of England at the moment and then their aggressiveness. But um, I mean, Nassim was sort of looking at me on the boundary with his arms out, going, "What is this?" You know, with a bit, and laughing. So, our guys had a bit of fun with it as well. Yeah. Okay, I think one thing that everyone wants to know is what is the update on Shaheen Shah Afridi? I mean, there's a lot that's been going on with him, but obviously everybody wants to see yeah. him fully fit in action once again, as soon as possible. Yeah, I, I, again, I'm going to bore you here. I, I don't know. Um, that's the honest yeah. truth. Um, but obviously the way this test match is going and the way England are playing, Pakistani fans are going to be eager for Shaheen to come back. And I yeah. suppose we all are. But, um, you know, I don't think he's going to be around for the next, certainly the next test. That's, What's... that's a guess from me, but yeah. Okay, nice. There's a lot of guessing <laughs> yeah, game going on so going on today good. in this uh, pit side show. But um, in terms of team talk, um, you know, we are hopeful. Well, we're definitely probably going to get a result tomorrow. I mean, the, considering yeah. the way this test match started, you know, there's a lot of talk around it being a draw towards the end because of the conditions and everything. But now we're in for a result. So what's what's the team talk like right now? I mean, how do you come out tomorrow is it session by session or what's what what does it mean like i think there was i mean throughout this test match the team talk has been um certainly and not a great deal of talking actually to be honest i mean the players are sorting it out but it's been it's been aggressive from our side um to a certain extent um it's been very positive it's talking about staying in the game and then when that light a glimmer of light comes through and you got a chance have a crack ourselves whether it's with the ball there's it's going to be opportunities with the ball, the way they play, and now they've given us an opportunity with the bat, or they've given us opportunities through the test with the bat, and and so is the wicket. So, we've actually batted, yeah, you know, we've played fairly aggressively for Test cricket, um, the way we've we've played as well. And even tonight, um, the guys are still going after it. So, in, so, it doesn't look like it because we're playing against England, yeah. but I think our approach has been quite aggressive as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you look at how many runs Pakistan scored today in this session. They've got mm. 80 runs on the board. Mm. You can minus that from from the total. Is it? Yeah. it it's not too premature to be hopeful. 260 to get. I mean, like I said, the game is open and it's open for us as well. And I think um, I'm not going to talk about the wicket too much, but on a wicket like this, um, you know, a sporty declaration, um, and 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 that's what I mean. Hopefully. Test cricket, the way England are going about it here, and, and, and like I said, opening the door for us to have a chance of winning the match, um, is going to make for good watching, yeah. All right. Thank you so much for your thoughts. I'm not going to keep you here. I'm sure you've got a lot to talk about in that dressing room. But yeah, that was Sean Tate, the bowling coach of Pakistan cricket team. We'll be taking a short break on this Inverex Solar Energy Pitch Side Show, and we'll be back shortly. Just a quick reminder of how things stand at this point of time. Pakistan need 263 runs to win on that last day of the Pakistan versus England test match in approximately 80 overs, whereas England will be requiring eight wickets. Back at the Inverex Solar Energy Pit Side Show, and I've been joined now by David Gower, DG. Um, lots of possibilities, well, two possibilities tomorrow. Um, Pakistan or England? Let's take your prediction <laughs> and why. Well, okay, England because I'm English. Um, 
Someone has to support them out here. <laughs> I think the yeah the the balance is just with him. And that first hour or so of this Pakistan second innings was absolutely crucial. Had Pakistan got away there, scot free as it were, weathered the storm, the bouncer storm, uh, and been numbed down when the spinners came on. Well, then you'd start to think you know, the opportunity is there for a famous win. Yes, there's a long way to go. So I mean, this, the art of predicting stuff in this game nowadays is to say nothing. <laughs> it's the only safe way to get through these questions, but I think, yeah, it'll be it, it'll it, it'll it'll make it a really interesting day tomorrow. I mean, all credit to well, mainly England. Uh, first of all, for making those runs so quick in the first inning. Secondly, for the declaration, which could have been held back for another twenty, thirty minutes, or even more, by previous captains. Uh, and it so it just keeps things nicely balanced. When we're talking about uh, today and how things went today, we saw England pepper Pakistan with a lot of short ball stuff. Obviously, we saw a lot of wickets because of that as well. Let's have a look at the fall of wickets for today. Fall of wickets brought to you by Inverex Solar Energy. Yeah, you see people who've made hundreds in the first innings uh, falling cheaply here. Uh, first of all, that cash in the deep. Secondly, Barbara has obviously decided to stand tall. Fall of wickets, brought to you by Inverex Solar Energy. I mean, you know, you, you look at this kind of strategy, a lot of teams have used that against Pakistan, you know, bowling them with that short ball. And today, it got them results, you know, from an England perspective. Yeah, it is one of those tactics that will have good days and bad. Um, and if anyone who's watched England in the last few years, there have been times when they've done it without success, uh, Stokes loves it. He's, you know, he's the one who's prepared to put in the effort, prepared to open the ball. And Robinson also with the extra height that he has. And although this pitch has been derided for being lacking in pace and balance, actually, sometimes that's harder. We made the point in front of Sometimes that's harder as a batsman. You're not quite sure whether to go for the hook shot, get underneath it, try and just defend it. Um, you haven't got long to make up your mind, we know that. Um, but it is a tactic which will sometimes work. So actually it was crucial, absolutely crucial for England that those two wickets fell. Baz, are you impressed with the captaincy of Ben Stokes and how he's used his bowlers, how he's uh, had his feet, field placements? Yeah, he's been, he's been brilliant. He's been, he's been on the ball. He's, he's done stuff that normally most ca captains don't. He's got a side who, who's redefining the way that you play test match cricket. And he declared where I wasn't convinced that he should have declared. He did that. I don't, I don't know what... David Gower feels Lord Gower, but I felt that he'd <laughs> given Pakistan a big chance, a big chance to come back into a test match where England had dominated throughout. And and I refer back to that Australia series where Australia won that test series over 15 days. But this theory of, of winning what's in front of you and making sure that it's just one off test and win that, if they do that tomorrow, I think Ben Stokes needs to be, what, mayor, well, but, mayor of Rawalpindi or something. Yeah, they're going to have a yeah. they're going to have a statue built of him somewhere here. Or, um, Man but, who got a result, <laughs> Rawalpindi. <laughs> yeah, on this. Yeah, yeah. Um, Azhar Ali's injury is that a is that going to be a huge blow for Pakistan? Well, I'm sure he is tough mm. enough. He will come back if needed tomorrow. It was. A period of play where there was that creator created a wicket and then Azur Ali going off and then Barbara Azam coming in and he getting dismissed. So that period of play worked in favour of England completely. I think that he'll come back. I, he walked off, he, it looked, I don't know, he'll have an x-ray, but I think that if needed, he'll come back tomorrow to bat. Well, there's something called upping the ante in cricket. Uh, England's ante hasn't reduced at any point of this time in this test match from day one up until now. And one of their star performers has been Harry Brook. <clears throat> Top performer brought to you by Inverex Solar Energy. Yeah, it's brilliant all test match and the ability to judge land and then hit it so hard. It just comes off his back so quickly even though he just timed it to the offside where it goes so so quickly the one shot that hit down the ground this one went all the way the one shot that hit down the ground with side not having any opportunity to to get down to it is just shows that 
Although it looks so simple, the power that he possesses is brilliant. Another player who loves playing in Pakistan and loves these conditions and also loves playing against Pakistan. Top Performer, brought to you by Inverex Solar Energy. Well, we saw something really interesting today, um, David, and that was Joe Root batting left-handed. Thoughts on that? I mean, have you ever had that opportunity to bat right-handed? Well, uh, we, we all have the opportunity. Uh, I never took it. I batted right-handed sometimes in nets, but never needed to or never tried to do it out in the middle, especially the test match. Uh, for Joe, yes, he can play, for instance, that reverse sweep very, very well. Um, this one was actually, looking at it, before the result, i.e. offering a catch mid-wicket, if he just froze the shot itself, I thought it looked very, very good. Mm. I thought Did the style you? was, it almost, I mean, <laughs> do you know what's amazing? How, how much better right-handers look when they, when they play left-handedly, you know? It's, yeah. It's, except Joe's one of the but, exceptions, he was pretty good batting. Isn't right. it the wrong way around, though? What, right-handed? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Well, it's almost mm. freaky, Baz. I mean, it's, yeah. not, it's not easy to be doing something like that. Just, you know, switching gears and being ambidextrous, changing the way around. Mm. Is it really to, obviously, unsettle the it's, bowling? Or? It's ridiculous skill, really, to be able to do that and actually hit a pretty decent shot. And it's a nightmare for the spinners. You, you're actually bowling, any, anyway, you're bowling to a right-hander and a left-hander with that reverse sweep and... and and the reverse hit or switch hit as you would call it. So even when the spinner is trying to curtail the runs by bowling outside leg, they've got so many shots that it's completely impossible as we saw throughout the games. You know, players now developing uh, their self as, as a left-hander, as a right-hander. David Warner can do it. David Gower can predominantly bat it left-handed. <laughs> and made it look simple now, you must be jealous of Joe Root. Well, I was just thinking, actually, take it to the next level. Maybe at some stage in the next two test matches, he can take his stance as a left-hander and play a reverse sweep as a left-hander. <laughs> now, that would be taking... <laughs> taking that would be... Taking, well, taking something, yes. That would be really teasing with the bowlers. I mean, he's been doing that... Mm. That The whole England team has been doing that, mm. though. We've seen the amount of reverse sweeps that they've been playing. Ben Duckett at the top. Mm. But, um, you know, we keep hearing your opinions and we keep hearing your what you have to say. It's time for Have Your Say. Have Your Say. Brought to you by Inverex Solar Energy. So, Baz, I've got this question for mm. you. Um, you know, we, there's been so much talk around Baz ball, and England does it. Is it hard for other teams to replicate that? Teams like Pakistan. It is hard. You, you've got to have, have the players, and you've got to buy into that strategy. And now with Baz ball, especially, they don't like it called Baz ball. Even McCullum sort of says, stays away, stay away from that. The problem here is that especially as a batter, you need a long leash. You will look silly at times. You will be questioned of, of trying to play too aggressively and getting out at, at a moment where the team needed more sedate batting. You will be questioned on that. But if the team management and the players and the coaching staff and the selectors all move in that one direction, then yes, maybe. But in Pakistan, I reckon if you had a player who'd got out stumped twice, everybody would question that and say, why doesn't he play more conventionally? So it's a difficult thing to do. And you want everybody on your side if you're going to play that way. I mean, just on what Baz pointed out, that there's so much external pressure as well, uh, David, to perform a certain way. And when it doesn't go your way, when we're talking about Baz ball, um, obviously, you receive a lot of criticism for all ends, but so it requires a lot of courage uh, for them to be playing that way, and apart from skill, of course. Yeah, I, mean, I actually thought Baz invented it 30 mm. years ago, but there you are. But I went to the forward defence. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been redefined. And the well left. It was beautifully done, beautifully done, yes, they re redefined it. Um, I mean, that, <laughs> Baz's point is right. It's, it's a cultural thing in terms of that particular team, the management, the captain, the players. It's freed a lot of people up in the England team, for sure. Um, it's, it's made Ben Stokes do some funny things as well. I mean, that shot today, you, he can get away with because he is the architect of that style of cricket. And if it goes straight up in the air for naught, well, that's apparently acceptable. Um, I didn't like that particular shot, I have to say. I thought it was appalling. Um, <laughs> but there are these, the risks they're prepared to take. 
at the same time, whatever way you want to play, you are always going to be um, subject to results, aren't you? So England, because they won six out of seven mm -hmm. last summer, validated that approach. Because they've made this the game it is here in Ralpindi as well, and they're now just favourites to win it, of course, um, yeah, again, that validates the style of play. If they have a run of games where it all unravels horribly, for instance, because of that. And let's face it, during the summer, just to remind people, against uh, New Zealand, they lost one against South Africa because it did unravel. Against New Zealand, the first test at Lords, it could have gone the other way. You know, one ball here, there was a, a no ball at the crucial moment. There was a brilliant hundred from Joe Root playing properly, not this, you know, uh, not this real sort of extravagant style we've seen here. So there, there is still room for a bit of a blend. Let me put it out, let me sum it up that way. But let's say hypothetically if england loses tomorrow would mm. this style of play be questioned that early declaration you know all of that or or would it not matter well tomorrow it won't matter if at the end of three matches it's still one nil in pakistan's favor for instance then there will be reflections on that because people want to win series partly actually for pakistan of course um there is this world test championship points thing which might or might not be important um, but for England, for Ben Stokes, he has basically put his reputation on the line. I mean, it is, it, it is either going to be B for bold or B for bonkers. Either way, it's going to be fun. <laughs> right. We'll have to wait and find out if it's uh, B for bonkers or B for whatever. But yeah, that was uh, have your say. Have your say. Brought to you by Inverex Solar Energy. All right, gentlemen, I can tell you that tomorrow is going to be an interesting day's play. The way the test match was moving initially, uh, you know, we're all thinking about how it's going to end. But one thing is for sure, we will get a result. So thank you so much for your thoughts once again. And we'll be joining you tomorrow for uh, all the action. You can have a look at what time we're starting tomorrow, which will be at 9.15. And I'm sure that all of you will be tuning in for this one. Well, the test match has certainly, certainly become really interesting and I'm definitely looking forward to tomorrow. It could be either Pakistan or England. We'll find out. See you tomorrow. Welcome to day four, Raul Pindi. And he takes that option. This is really good batting. And that is a 50 for Salma. Outside edge and gone. Big shout, big shout for stomping towards the leg umpire. Well, he's got a wicket. Ball in the air, a chance and accepted this time around. A good bouncer from Muhammad Ali. Short ball down the leg side as he gloved it. Pakistan thinks he's gloved it. 50 for Juru. And it's Harry Brook again who's pushing the boundaries. 50 in the second innings to follow. 150 in the air. There are three men out there. The short ball plan has worked. This is a huge moment in the game.